You know what's great about metal bands? A lot of them don't know music theory. In fact, a lot of them don't seem to want to know music theory. The band Slayer is the perfect example of a band that doesn't write music from a theoretical standpoint. They just go with what sounds good and what feels good, and a lot of times that just means a lot of chromatic movements, right? The band Opeth, on the other hand, kind of uses a similar approach, but the difference between the two is that Slayer's more concerned with power chords and single notes, whereas Opeth is actually using full chords, major chords, minor chords, dominant chords, diminished chords, sevenths, etc. They're using a much more harmonically rich choice of chords. So today we're going to take a look at the song In My Time of Need by Opeth, and I just want to go through and just admire what they've done harmonically, okay? Here we go. All right, so In My Time of Need by Opeth, essentially in the key of E minor, and a lot of different sections in the song. I wanted to go over them piece by piece. So the intro does this little E minor, 11, E minor, 9 kind of thing, getting that tonality. I'm not going to play it exactly how it's written, but that's the basis for that. So just consider it like the one chord in E minor. Once the verse comes in, um, Mikhail Ackerfeld actually does this really cool rhythmic thing with the vocals where he kind of goes dun, 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 kind of does that thing. I'm sure there's a name for that. I'm not aware of what that name would be at this point. But that section again is using... thing and then it switches to a what do you call this thing over here an A minor 9 back to the E back to the A minor 9 and what's cool about those two chords is they could be seen as like the 1 to 4 in the key of E minor or they can just be seen as two disparate minor chords that happen to both have 11s and or 9s and they just kind of flow and they they meld very well together. The pre-chorus, this is where you have a dramatic shift in the sound. And this is what I mean by bands like Opeth kind of not really going with a traditional approach to music theory. They're going from E minor to a C sharp sus 2. Summer is miles and miles away. Down to a B sus two. Over to a to an A six. And then a B flat sus two. So let me do that again for you here. Summer is miles and miles away. don't necessarily go together. First of all, three out of the four are sus chords, so that's breaking diatonic rules in and of itself, and the A6 doesn't really have much place either. The point here is that they found a way to make things sound very interesting without necessarily knowing the rules or following the rules, much like with Slayer, but with Opeth it's much more harmonically interesting. All right, the next section, which would be the chorus, resumes back to E minor. So we started in E minor for the verse. The pre-chorus went to that crazy sus chord part, which sounds amazing. What a transition. But now we're going to the actual chorus itself. We're back and we have an E minor and I to a B minor. Minor 9 with an F sharp in the freaking bass. God, that sounds good. Back to the E minor add 9. And then it's just going to do that again. So that, that is so cool. Let's hear that again. Ready? Here comes the E minor 9 with the F sharp. And then back. So that's one hell of a chorus. 
All right, the last section we're gonna take a look at is the bridge. And similar to the chorus when they did that E minor with the F sharp and the bass, there's another situation here where we're playing an A sus2 chord. And then the second time we play it, we play a B flat in the bass. So those bass notes are adding movement and tension. So it's... sing for shit but and then it goes up to the C major and then it does a C major a C sharp major 7 right at the end of that need right so I mean god damn these guys are phenomenal talk about like making the most out of nothing right they don't show up to the party Michael Ackerfeld says he doesn't know theory Stephen Wilson says he doesn't know the notes Slayer clearly has no goddamn care in the world but yet these bands they come up with this great stuff so for what it's worth, learn the theory, don't learn the theory, but it, it, it's fun to look at stuff like this with a background in theory because you can tell that they were really just going for it. Maybe it was an instinct to bring that bass note up to B flat to get that tension, or maybe it was an accident, you know, or maybe they had to rub all four of their brains together to, to make that work. I don't know, but as always, Opeth continues to amaze. Thank you guys for watching. Like, subscribe, hit the comment button hit the subscribe button and leave a comment and i will continue to learn how to speak properly thank you all for watching we'll see you next time